the reason why I wanted to have this particular conversation today, well, a couple of things very heavy on my heart, and many of you may not know, um, I am the founder of um, Born to be Powerful Academy, which is the home of Women Speaking Grow Rich, is where I train women speakers and coaches to build their six-figure higher speaking and coaching business and really helping them walk away from jobs that do not serve them, helping them build massive income and empires and build legacies and being able to share their story and their message. And so the reason why I decided to come today, because it's Wednesday and this is the day I normally train and all of those things. And I've had conversations with people today over the last couple of days. But what I realized, and I need to hear every woman hear the sound of my voice. Gentlemen, if you're watching me right now, if you have a daughter, you have a sister, a mom, a wife, this can share it with them, tag them, share it with them for sure, because I'm sure it's something that could possibly help them with understanding what is happening. Yes, I know COVID-19 is happening around the world. I saw a message um, today about California and what they are about to do. Again, saw a message today about what California is potentially extending, expanding out the stay home act of order uh, for another 90 days. What? But I get it. I understand trying to keep people safe and all of that is a struggle in itself, from all the tragic, tragic things that are happening. But I just want to kind of speak, not kind of, I want to talk to the souls of women right now. If you are a woman right now, whether you're driving, you're listening to this or what have you, if you need to pull over to the side of the road, I want to have a conversation with you. Not because I think it's a good idea or it's just somebody else just comes in on, coming on and help motivate us. I really want to inspire you to think about something different. And I wrote it down just to make sure I don't stay on here long because I have a lot of things to do, but I wanted to make sure I had this conversation because it's been on my heart, something that I have to be cognizant of every single day. And I put here, the woman you're becoming is more important than you will ever know. Because of what's happening in society and because of what's happening around the world, many of us are in the midst of who we are to become and some of the things that are happening right now. Whether you are a stay home mom or you're a working mom and working from home or you are now a school teacher, okay, school is out in most places, however, you're homeschooling or you're in the house with your spouse or your significant other or a house full of people, whatever the case may be, I want you to think about something. I just want you to, if you have to go in the closet right now, if you have to go in the kitchen, go in a room where it's quiet and just tell people, give you 10, 15 minutes max, just so you can hear this. The woman you are to become and the woman you are becoming is more important than you will ever know today. And the reason being, because many of us have spent our entire lives, and I wrote these down, and it was just like, bam, 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 like, where are these coming from? Because I know all too well what we deal with as women is totally different from our male counterparts and what they deal with. And I get they're dealing with their own things, but ladies, we deal with these very things. Our entire lives, one, waiting for validation. Be honest. How many of you right now have been sitting around waiting on other people to validate who you are, who you are in society, who you are in the family, who you are as a spouse, who you are in business, who you are in relationships? You're sitting around waiting to be validated. One, by people who will probably never validate you in such a way in which you need or by people that you really shouldn't even care about what they say, or just simply by people who really don't care about the success for your success or who you become. And I know all of you, some of you know that too well about you're surrounded by people who really don't who really don't care. As long as you're giving them what they need or keeping them happy, they're okay. So many of us spend our entire lives waiting on others to validate us. And we find ourselves in a place, and, and if, if I may be honest, even with the experiences that I had, this is also Su Suicide Awareness Month, really finding myself in that place because, you know, be, be honest with you, it's just when I was married, I really wanted to be validated and nothing against him. It was just, that's on me, waiting on my husband at the time to validate who I was because I was insecure. I felt like I wasn't worthy or I wasn't enough. And so honestly, we spend our lives wanting someone else to validate us when the true validation comes from within. 
you just knowing who you are, what it, what it is you've been called to do, and knowing that you bring something to society and to this world that most people cannot bring, and it's just simply you. I know I'm just talking to myself because I'm looking at myself in the mirror, but I really want to have that conversation with you. Whoever you are in your life right now, if you have been sitting around waiting on someone to validate you and tell you how special you are and how anointed you are and how smart you are and you're beautiful and all of that, how about you start with knowing that yourself? So when they show up, you say, thank you. But you're thinking inside, I knew that in a humble way, but not the person like, oh my gosh, they just told me I'm just so beautiful. I really didn't. But how about you know that for yourself? The second thing most of us or many of us spend our entire lives doing, not using our voice, never standing up for yourself, never saying anything about what you don't like and because you want to appease and please everybody. Oh, my, that sounds so painful. Just saying everybody sounds painful and you're not using your voice. When is the last time you said no? I just want to check. Real quick, let me check because I can't see the comments. You know, I'm, I'm a Periscope girl and I'm used to seeing comments fly by and all of that. When is the last time you said no? It is a full sentence. When is the last time you said no? No, 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 no. And not feel guilty about it. Using your voice to say, it's okay. You don't have to say yes to everything. Some of you got a break because of COVID-19 because you were doing everything at church. You're on this board and you're doing this and you're doing that and you know you're tired and you rarely, barely had time for yourself. The woman you're becoming is more important or the woman you become is more important than you will ever know because many of us, one, are spending our entire lives waiting on validation from other people, two, not using our voice and speaking up for those who can't speak for themselves or speaking up just for us. It took me a while to stand up, you know, in my relationship, um, stand up in the world, even in my family being the baby of 12, just really just finding my voice. Now, the military helped a lot. Of course, because by the time 21 years passed and I retired, I really had the opportunity. And even there was a little bit, it was strict about what you could and could not say. And I have never, and I'll be honest, I've never felt more free than I, I feel now. However, I still have to practice on using my voice. And I'll just use, just honestly, a case in point of what I do. My business has expanded and all of that. And I have to tell people, no. Like literally, like, unfortunately, I can't help you in your business. And they're getting upset. Like, what do you mean you can't help me? Thanks for being discouraging. And all of like, no, it's not that. Would you rather I tell you the truth and say, I can't help you versus wasting your time and mine and going through the process? I'm honest with myself. I know who I am. And I want you to know who you are. If you're listening to me right now, know who you are, know what you bring to the table and know you can't do everything for everybody. And so honestly, not using your voice is really hindering you from becoming the woman that you were meant to become. No is a full sentence. Practice saying no. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I want to focus on my business. No, I want to do that. No, I don't want to date you. Nope, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I know I'm single, but you're not the maid for me. It's okay. Not using your voice and really just sitting back and letting people tell you what you are to do is not helping you along this path of becoming the woman you were meant to be. Number three. Who? this one is my favorite. I'm going to say that on the next one too, but this one is my all-time favorite. Hiding behind the guilt and the shame. Many of us spend our time hiding behind the guilt and the shame of the things we did years ago. And I'll be honest, I catch myself sometimes thinking about some, you know, when I, especially on my personal page, um, it took me years to come onto my personal page and start sharing these messages and these stories and all of that because a uh, majority of our Facebook pages are our friends and they're our family and all. And I have a big family from the Isoms to the Davises. Um, to the Burns, uh, let's see, Striblings now with my kids and all of that. There's a big, the Yankee ways, all of that is going on. And so 
I really, it didn't even going over to the other family, like the Frasers and all of that, that is the Washingtons, all of those families. Yes, I said, if you're listening right now, I called out all of us that are in Arkansas right now. But it is more of the things that I did and some of the mistakes that I made as a young woman and just really not wanting to be reminded of who I was. And I got to a point like, you look, whatever. I'm not her anymore. I'm the better, best version of me, but really hiding behind that guilt and the shame and got to a place of, hey, it is what it is. I was there. I used to open a club and shut it down. Now I'm shutting it down on Friday night on my couch by nine o'clock because I'm tired. And so it's just many of us are spending our entire lives hiding behind our guilt and the shame. Why? We all have made mistakes. I'm not proud of some of the mistakes that I made by no means. However, I had to release myself from that. And that's what I'm asking you to do right now. In order for you to become the woman you were meant to be, release that thing. Let somebody else have it. It's heavy. First off, very heavy. Very heavy to carry. And it really stops you from becoming the person you were meant to be because either people want to remind you or you remind yourself of the person you used to be, what you used to do, some of the things and mistakes you did, what you said, what you've said, and all of that. And it's a big deal. You know, I was watching um, The Last Dance, Michael Jordan's um, documentary about his life and his career. And I haven't had a chance to watch all of them. You know, my son would come downstairs and just check over the television downstairs. And most of the time I don't have it on. I'm just sitting in the quiet. And I just remember the story about um, Scotty Pippen making a decision. He wasn't going to go in the game. And how selfish he was at that moment because he was inside his feelings, his ego, and all of that. And that being brought up years later, and they're talking about on ESPN, you know, all these shows they have and all of that. And I can't even imagine. It's like, man, I gotta live this again. And the answer is yes. And then people talking about, I thought I heard him say something in the nature of, I probably wouldn't do it again as if they was open for a discussion. My son said he heard him say that he probably would do it again. Either way, he did it. And now he has to relive that thing over again. And I think for me, just being honest, I think it's a little different for men versus for women because we wear our feelings. Some of us on, ooh, fingertips, eyelashes, hair, ears, nose, tips, all of that, we wear our feelings all over the place. And then we're living with the guilt in itself. And it seems like it's overwhelming and it's heavy, but it's stopping us from becoming the woman we were meant to be. You're supposed to grow into this woman. It's supposed to be growth and not you get to this point and then you go back and then you get to this point. And every time you think you're a better woman, which you're supposed to be every single day, you go back to this guilt and shame of the things that you had, whether you had an abortion years ago or you were raped and you, you think you have to see the family or the child that was, you know, that was birthed out of that rape or, you know, people reminding you that you were married. I still see friends now and they're like, hey, how's your husband? From years ago, they were stationed with in Germany. I'm like, my husband, I'm not married. I'm divorced. Why you guys, bro, we've been divorced almost 10 years now. What are you talking about? They just don't know. And I used to relive that. I don't relive it anymore. I probably say, oh yeah, he's remarried. He's got you know a new wife. They got a baby, all of that. And they're like, you okay? I'm great because I let, let that guilt and shame go by. I'm telling all my business today. Why not? It's the only one I know that's true. I don't know about anybody else, but I know being in a place now where I get to serve some of the most amazing women around the world and seeing some of the things we deal with it makes me want to have conversations like this every day if I could unfortunately I can't but the woman you're becoming is more important than you will ever know but we spend our entire lives going through this so number one I said waiting on validation from others number two not using our voice to say no and using our voice to express how we feel instead of just blowing up but really expressing I don't like that I don't like this. No, I don't want to do that. And feeling okay that you said no, because you're opening up space to become that woman you need to be. Um, next, hiding behind our guilt and shame. And number four, oh my gosh, this is my next favorite. We spend our entire lives making excuses of why we haven't done something. If I ask you now, why haven't you went back to school? Oh, Dr. Sonia, I haven't went back because, you know, of the money situation and this is not a good time. It's always never a good time. It's never going to be a perfect time. 
ever. I don't care what anybody tell you. You come and say, oh, it's a perfect time to do this. No, it's not. Not necessarily. Like even now, I was having a conversation with the ladies today in my Women Speaking Grow Rich group. And I said, many people have decided not to join, not to join this movement of building your business because they're saying, oh, it's not a good time. It's not, it's never going to be a good time. It'll be a good time when you lose your job and you should have built your business on the side. It'll be a good time when you lose everything. And now you're trying to figure out how do I recover from all of that? It's never going to be a good time. And you're making excuses why things are not happening. Why? It's no one else's fault but yours. No one. And let's just be real. Financially, I went through a bankruptcy. I lost houses. We lost, I've lost it all. All of it. Many a days I walked around like this, bloop, bloop, big loser, you know, in school and in the military, it was this big thing, loser, that's how I felt. And I would make this when the bankruptcy came through, chapter 13 and all those things. I was like, oh my God, I was so depressed behind that. Because you go from almost an 800 credit score to you can't go buy a piece of gum because you don't have a credit card or whatever the case may be. And then really getting to a place, all that was on me. I'll take responsibility. It wasn't anybody else's, anybody else's responsibility. I'm not blaming my ex. I'm not blaming anybody. I had something to do with that. And I had to come to grips. This is all about the woman be, The woman you're becoming is more important than you will ever know when you get to a place where you are not making excuses for your life. If you don't like the life that you are living right now, guess what? Change it. Yeah, I said it. I am not the one to sit here. Why are you so harsh on us, Dr. Sonia? On the ladies. And, you know, back in the day when I started, I was talking about relationships. A lot of folks would say, you're male bashing. I'm like, bro, if you only knew, I think I'm harder on the women that I've ever been on the men because of how we think about things. And we make excuses for why something hap hasn't happened. Well, my baby daddy didn't do this. You chose him. We choose those men to have kids with, right? So don't blame anybody else. Hey, your picker may be broken. That, that's all, just may be a little broken. That's about it, but it's all good. But you make different choices. The decisions that you're making today are going to affect your tomorrow. So pay close attention to the things that you're doing. The men we're getting with, the men we're having babies with, the men we're marrying, the decisions we're making in our careers, in our business, you get to pick and choose what you want your life to turn out to be. Even in COVID-19 right now, many of you are thinking, yes, I see what the government is doing. I see, I see all of that. But guess what I decided? I'm going to control my space. I don't have, the world could be opening up. I'm not out there in it. There's certain things I'm, mm, nope, not, mm, nope, not doing it right now. You get to decide where our society and what is happening is because of some of the decisions that we as a collective group are making, but more so the decisions we are making as individuals. The woman you're becoming is more important or the woman you become is more important than you will ever know. Like at this very moment, our world is totally different. It will never go back to say ever. When, you, when I hear I normally say, don't say never, ever, never, ever, ever will it be the same and nor should you. If you have not made the shift, in business we call it pivot. In the world today, if you have not made the shift to understand, instead of just sitting around in panic mode, oh, this, the world is falling, this is falling. What are you doing about the space that you operate in? What kind of woman are you becoming right now? What kind of woman are you becoming in your finances? What kind of woman are you becoming in business? Are you starting a business? Are you just still relying on your job that you just got laid off from and you knew you should have started a business a long time ago? What type of wife are you becoming or do you want to be a wife or whatever the case, the woman you're becoming or you become is more important than you will ever know. And making excuses of why things have not happened, that is so 2018. Matter of fact, 2015, if I can go that far back. What decision are you going to make today that you know that's going to affect you tomorrow to make it better? Okay. Number five. Oh, this is my favorite. You said, you just said favorite. All of them, all of them are my favorite. Putting things off until tomorrow. I think I just fell out and hit my head. Man, a pet peeve of mine when I hear that is just like makes my, you know, you hear like the chalkboard. It's probably taking her near and all of that. That's how it feels. Oh, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. Do you realize that there are plenty of people that were talking about tomorrow and it never came? 
I hear all the time, oh, before COVID-19 happened, before COVID-19 happened, before, co okay, it's here. It's probably gonna be here a couple more months. What else are you gonna put off? What else are you going to put off doing this whole pandemic? What are you gonna put off? And let me just talk, and I know I'm talking to women, but gentlemen, you can hear this too. There's one thing that I am absolutely positive of. You can put off something tomorrow if you want to, and it ends up being a year or five years. The best time to do it is now. If you had the thought of uh, maybe not traveling and all of that, and you know, let's be fair in all of this. But if you had the thought of starting your business, start it now. Don't put it off till tomorrow because tomorrow may never come or your tomorrow may be five, 10 years. We're all going to remember um, March. I would say it started in March 2020 uh, when 20 was supposed to be the year that we were going to do the doggone thing. In 2020, we got locked down where we can't travel. Most people around the world couldn't even go outside for weeks and get groceries. Literally, I've been on calls with clients international where they're like, Dr. Sonia, I have to go right now because we just got the message we can go get groceries. What? And I'm like, wow, this is a world we live, on, live in and many of us are putting things off until tomorrow. And your tomorrow becomes a year or five years from now. I, I just can't live like that. The woman that you are to become cannot live like that. It has to be a shift that is made. So if you just as of today said, I'm going to wait until tomorrow. Don't wait. Do it now. I've come to a place when I get the thought, if somebody just drops in my spirit instantly, like, oh, I need to call so-and-so. Normally, if I'm in the middle of something, I write it down so I don't forget. Put a sticky somewhere if I'm in my office. And I'm like, call so-and-so. And I'll just say, hey, I was just thinking about you. They're like, you okay? I just know now because tomorrow's not promised because a lot of us are doing that. We've been doing this our entire lives and something's got to shift. And that shift is you more than anything. And so the woman you're to become is more important than you'll ever know. Next, number six, letting people tell you your value and your worth. We have spent our entire lives, and I don't know what it is for women. I, I just, it, every time I think about it, I get emotional. I don't know what happened between our Barbie, Barbie dolls and dress up in the Easy Bake oven, oven to playing jacks or hopscotch or those things. They probably don't do that anymore, but you know, I don't know what happened between that and to who we are now where we lose our value of what we bring to this world, what we bring to our families, what we bring to our companies that we work for, or even the businesses that we have, where, what happened where we start not knowing how valuable we are? I struggle with this for years, man. And it's to, not until I would say the last year or two, I started thinking like, wait a minute, um, yeah, I, I do know about that. Yeah, I do have 21 years of military experience. Yeah, I have done this. I've traveled around the world. I've done this. I have made a comeback. I posted something today. My team posted something today. It was about uh, Humpty Dumpty and women putting themselves back together again, but not putting ourselves back together the way we were before, but putting ourselves back together to being even better than we could ever imagine. There's something about us being afraid of our own shadow. Like, oh, you, you want to do what? How dare you? And this is little voice in your head. It's like, no, you can't do that. You, How do you think that you're going to build a six-figure business? Do you know you did this and you had a child at a young age and you made D's in school and you don't have this and you don't have that? And a part of it's like, no, don't do it because you're not worthy. You're not enough. Where do we get that? And most of us spend our entire lives. I know I'm talking to you because I'm talking directly to you right now. You have spent your entire life thinking that you are less than and you are not enough, but I'm here to tell you, you are. You bring value to this world and everything that you have been called to do, you can do it, but you have to put in the work and get out of your own way. You're messing this thing up. You haven't written that book because you're thinking who's gonna read it. You'll be surprised at who's gonna read it. 
I am just now feeling, and, and if I may be very transparent, I know many people are going to watch this, you're going to share it, whatever. Because I know I'm speaking directly to some woman that just needed to hear this message today. I wish someone would have, I could have heard this years ago. May have not taken me so long to get through my insecurities and my doubt and my low self, all those things that, Lord, we deal with. And then we show our daughters how to do it. And you're mad because, well, she picked the wrong man. Well, she saw you do it. And it is more of letting people tell you your value and your worth. And I'll just use for in business. I know what my worth and value is. I don't let anybody get on a conversation in a room and try to tell me, oh, you're too expensive. Okay, what you're saying, I just don't want to invest in, you, in myself with you right now. Because it's not, I know my value. I know what I bring to the table. And I want you to know what you bring to the table as well. Don't let anybody else put a price tag on you. Because if they do, they're going to put one on, it's going to be cheap. Because they wanted to fit their agenda and what it is that they want out of life. And so, yeah, if you put it out there cheap, by all means, be on the sales rack for the rest of your life. Mm -mm. I refuse. And I was on that sale rack for a long time. Matter of fact, I was on a discounted, discounted rack over there in the back. You know, where everybody, somebody comes like, where's your sales rack? In the back. In the back. They don't put it in the front. You ever thought about that? Why don't they put the sales stuff in the front? Stop being in the back. Stop letting people put a value or price tag on you because they were always undervalued because they wanted to fit their agenda. I am truly grateful for the life I get to live through all of this. I do. And I sit back and I was sharing with the ladies and I was sharing with a team member and some friends. I said, I've never been in this place before. And they said, you always say that. I said, no, I've had more women send nasty. I've never seen so many nasty people in my life ever so nasty and I just I start thinking about what celebrities think about what the people put posted that people are so rude some people are just rude and they're they want to put their negativity and how what they're experiencing they want to put it on you because they're not happy so they want to you know put that on you and so they come back they're me or you're this and you're that like ma'am I don't know what to tell you I get to pick and choose what I want to do right? You don't get to put a price tag on me. You don't get to put a stamp of approval on me because I come that way. And so it is just, we spend our li entire lives allowing people to do that to us. And then we find ourselves retracting all the time. Well, I'm not good enough. And I say, I'm going to stand my ground. And I'm saying this to someone because I know it is, it's, it's helping. That woman that you're about or that you're becoming right now through all of this is more important than you ever know because once you stand your ground, people can walk past you, they can do whatever, but they will not be able to walk over you. They'll walk around, they can jump over your head or whatever they wanna do, but they will not be able to control your mindset. They will not be able to control what you are to be called to do in this world. I watch men not really deal, some do, but not as much as we do. Well, they're gonna judge me or they're gonna think they're gonna do that anyway. I'm just gonna give you something better to talk about. That's it. I come out of this place, you know, I have a Facebook ad going and someone say, oh, but you uh, put a Facebook ad, ma'am, I built the first million not being on Facebook ads. The best way to get this message out here, I know you don't see a lot of women who look like me on ads. I get it. I'm starting to see more and more people that look like a, that are women of color come say, you know, I will invest in myself. I'm happy for us. Please do. Because not just women of color, women, period. We always lowball who we are and letting people tell us what our value and our worth is. The woman you're becoming is more important than you will ever know. Many of us spend our entire lives, number seven, I got two more and then I'm done. Thinking things have to be perfect. As a recovering perfectionist, <laughs> Man, I get people send me stuff about, oh, you got, you didn't dot your eye on your, your Facebook page. Man, get off of my, get out of my email about an eye dot. Are you kidding me? Did you read? Did you learn anything? Did anything I say resonate with you and make you want to be a better person? And all you got was, I did cross an eye. Oh, you left out the T over there. Okay, we'll put it on there later. You probably look three years is not there. I just, I had to release that because it, that was very tiring. It has to be perfect. I don't want to come out looking like this. And I said, you know what? 
conversation that I had with myself was just be authentic and be real and care about people and help serve them to the next level. That was my thing. It may be dirty, raw, what have you. I may mispronounce something. I may say something, my pronunciation of a word, whatever. I don't care. I really don't care anymore. I know that there's so much more that we can be doing to help other people, but we are still over here in this perfectionist role that it's gotta be perfect. I almost wouldn't put lashes on, put make, ah, you know, I, not today. I don't feel like it. My eyebrows feel like they're covering my entire eye because I need them done. I took my nails off, one just like cut right in the middle of it, still hurting, waiting on that to heal. I said, I refuse to have to live this perfect life. Marshawn Evans Daniels, who used to coach me years ago, said something to me probably five years ago. She said, perfectionists are broke. Man, that crushed me. Oh, that hurt. I literally cried. Oh my God, did she say? Because it was. Broke all day. Broken internally, emotionally, spiritually, and broke financially. And that's where I start coming up with this thing. I will never be another. I do not want to be another broke Christian. I'm just not going to do it. Not having it. Not not running around anybody's church, falling out, passing out, all that. And I can't pay my, I'm just not going to do it. Can somebody teach me a little bit more? You see how I rolled into that? Being perfect in this perfect world. And I said, I want to be able to have some things and show my children. I don't want them to be perfect. I do not stress my kids about when I did at the beginning when my son was at Michigan. And he said one day, he said, mom, a C at Michigan is like an A. And I was like, well, he's probably right. But at the same time, like, why are you stressing them about that? They got to have an A. You didn't have an A. Matter of fact, undergrad, not grad. Yeah, probably got one D. I was a D student. And the only thing that kept me in school was playing basketball. If it was not for that, probably would have went. Mm, nope. I wanted to play ball. I just, that was my stress reliever when I was on the court man, nothing. It wasn't even being perfect. It's like, I want to win. And so by any means necessary of winning, but it's not about being perfect. Be productive, be progressive, not perfect. Be productive and be progressive, not perfect. Different area that we're living in. If you have family members and moms that are stressing you out about being perfect, it's time to say, I'll holler at you. Just get some space right now because that is not going to help you become the woman you need to be and last but not least and thank you for being here if you are on replay click hashtag replay when you go back through this share tag somebody make sure you share this please last one many of us spend our entire lives taking care of everybody else and we come last we get the leftovers we get the last bit of energy that we cannot really do the things we need to because everybody else comes first. It's like we've been everything to everybody else, but we've been nobody to ourselves. And that's a sad situation for us as women to be in. You know, you'll hear me say all the time, you are more than your husband's wife. You are more than your children's mother. Your children are gonna grow up and be gone and you're still trying to figure out at 40, 50, for some of you that waited late to have kids, 60, trying to figure out who you are, find out now. Have a life outside of that. And I know that's what we do. We just bury ourselves. And I did it. And I almost didn't start my business in 2015. You know, let me tell you why. Because of this. My children were playing sports. I was with them. I'm a single mom back then. I'm trying to get them to sports. And I'm doing this. And I was like, no, it'll wait. I did one of those things. I'll put it off. And I start thinking, these kids are going to grow up. I'm no longer somebody's wife. I'm responsible for these kids primarily 90% of the time by myself, more like 95, right? And I said, I got to find something for me. If I would have waited until my youngest is Mahari, that was, he's been, he's going into his third year of college. If I would have waited, I would just be starting like, oh, okay, what does this life look like out of here? Now I'm not, um, you know, a mom, I'm still a mom, but that child is here from college. You know where he is at the time in his room? Normally on team meetings with the football team, doing assignments, working on his new business, doing all those things. He's, we meet for dinner, for breakfast or whoever's cooking. We kind of take turns sometimes, you know, he's kind of, he wakes up so late. But all I want you to know in order, you know, becoming this woman you were meant to be, 
start taking care of yourself and don't feel guilty for putting yourself first. I'm not saying be selfish, like it's all about me. That's not what I'm saying, but take care of yourself, some time for you. We get so burnt out in this world as women because we take care of everybody else. If nothing else with COVID-19, even if you're in the house with your family, take some time away, go outside for it now. Hey, this is my time, your job, after work, whatever you need to do, because do not spend the rest of your life doing these things, waiting on validation, you not using your voice, hiding behind the, the shame and the guilt, making excuses why you're not where you want to be, putting things off until tomorrow and you look up, it's a year, five years later, letting people tell you your value and your worth, thinking things have to be perfect and taking care of everybody else and putting yourself last. I call game over and it's really game on because now it's time for you to think about you and what it is that you want. It's time for you to become the woman you were born to be in owning your power and more so, it's more important for you to become the woman that you're supposed to be in this life, in today's society, not what people tell you and just becoming the woman you're meant to be growing through this. If that's the last thing I can share with you, I have really, really done some some so searching even through all of this about who I am and I think about it more so than I ever have before or why some things are happening and why do I get to live not why I know why because I said yes why do I get to live this life is because I say I said yes to my next level I made next level decisions in order for me to have a next level life and have those results and so what I challenge you today to do is become the woman you were meant to be and start putting yourself first and not living your entire life doing those exact things that I mentioned. This is Dr. Sonia Stribling. Please make sure you follow me on all social media platforms and make sure you go get your free gift at drsoniafreegift.com. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this helps someone, blesses you and makes you think about where you are. And one woman told me, she said, I'm binging on your videos. Well, this is one that you binge on. Have a great day and you all be safe out there.